want to talk a little bit about what Tucson means to me, because this is one of the most important locations, I think, in any video game for me. If you felt like this game has been really hard up to this point because you don't play a lot of RPGs, I want to tell you that I hear you. I lost one of those early fights even now with all the experience that I have. It was my mistake, certainly, but I still lost at the very beginning one time. I've gone on record saying that I think Onet is one of the hardest areas in the game. Any unlucky smash attack can just end you. And as a kid, on my first night playing the game, it consisted of getting my butt handed to me, sorry, getting my head handed to me, gotta use the cannon term, by the sharks. And then I was getting my head handed to me by Frank over and over again. Then I was getting it handed to me by the Titanic Ant over and over again. And then the cops over and over again. I was hitting so many roadblocks at every turn that it was especially fitting that this was happening in Onet. I ended up going to bed that night feeling like I hadn't done a lot and like I just could not beat Captain Strong. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna stick with the game because my thought was, yeah, it's funny and yeah, I like the music, but it's really hard and is the whole game gonna be that way? When I woke up the next morning through a stroke of just luck, I beat Captain Strong in one try. And when I got to Tucson and I no longer felt restricted, the difficulty lightened up a lot because there's not tough enemies everywhere. I could save myself with scrolling HP. Um, I could just kind of go around and talk to people and I had a moment of rest. And with the happy music just being so welcoming and me getting it stuck in my head, I credit Tucson with getting me into this game and possibly being one of the key reasons that I stayed a fan of it for so long and still play it to this day. I might not have finished it had it not been for this. I want you to know that if you've been frustrated because things have been difficult, the rough patch is pretty much over. Now let's have fun exploring this great town. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we made it out of Onet. We did the impossible, busting down Onet's roadblocks. In a metaphorical sense, we busted down the police officers who busted down the roadblocks. We played a game of dominoes. And we made it to Tucson, town number two on our journey. This time, I would tell you all about Tucson, but I'm gonna hand the reins over to Miss Bubbly Blonde Girl over here. Welcome. Would you like me to tell you about Tucson? That's what I'm here for. My job, but I'm feeling like spreading the love today. Tucson has a modern clean hotel. There's a hospital and the wonderful Chaos Theater. There is the Polestar Preschool and a nice bus station. Oh, I'm looking for the Polar Star Preschool. You got any info on that? If you're curious, you might want to check out Berglund Park. It's exciting. East of town, you'll find the peaceful Rest Valley. On the other side of the valley is Happy Happy Village. There's also a pizza parlor. Do you want to know anything else? Well, tee -hee. I don't know anything else. You done good, kid. Thank you for doing my intro for me. This time, we are exploring the happy peppy town of Tucson Eagle Land. I've been looking forward to this. This is where I feel like the game really opens up, feels very big, and I love the atmosphere of Tucson. It's an example of how just, you know, a little palette swap to make things look more autumn-y. It feels like you've come a long way. It goes a long way. And this town theme, I let you listen to it last time. I can't help but feel happy, which is why I'm going into the hotel and overriding it completely. Upon arriving in Tucson, very first thing that I recommend doing is staying in the hotel. And it's convenient because it's right by the entrance of town when you're probably weak from the battles on the way here. You see how that works? Yeah, game design. I think that means I have Doug Trio dollars. I, li I like doing that a lot. I like trying to figure out what number a Pokemon is whenever I just see a random three-digit number. Eventually, though, you run out of times so that you can get that right. Welcome to Hotel Tucson. One night stay will cost you $50. Do you want to stay? Why, yes, George Jefferson, I would like to stay. Have a nice stay. Ness? Ness? Ness. I'm a friend who you have never met before. My name is Paula. Can you hear me calling you? I am Paula. Good morning, good morning, good morning, yeah. Woken up from that, we'll definitely get our butts over to Polestar Preschool after we explore the town a little bit more. But reading the newspaper before you go, they have their own newspaper, the Tucson Tribune. Ghosts found to inhabit Tunnel to Threed. Willing to bet that's the third town in our journey. 
gives us a little bit of insight on what's going on, and you want to talk to this guy. What? So what? Huh? Pardon? Jeez. Hmm? You're annoying. Dang me. Yeah, yeah. Ah ha ha! Hey you! Later days, pal. Ah ha ha! It's so hot today! It rocks! Is it cold today? Oh ho ho! See ya! Here, get yourself a juice or something! Ka-ching! Ness got $50! You effectively get to stay for free in the hotel! For how much I've criticized the hotel for being a waste of time and a waste of money, considering you can heal quicker and freer in many places, uh, this one you can stay at for free. Do I have a mushroom on my head? You got a funny hat on. You're one of those people who says no right off the bat to any question, alright? Well, I am known for saying no, I can't deny that. That's what I thought. Recently, I couldn't walk quite right. It was because of this mushroom. It's actually kind of fun, so I'll leave it there. You might be able to piece together what that is based on what we've seen already. A little bit of uh, foreshadowing there, um, if you want to even call it something that clever. And uh, we haven't really done a whole lot of calling. Let's call our mom because we've come a long way already. We're pretty far from home. Let's let her know that we're okay. Ness? Don't say a word. I know exactly what you're thinking. My son, who'd have thought he was such a brave kid? Oh, yeah, you're a hero, honey. Click. Be she hung up on me after that false. Jeez, that was disappointing. Glad to know that I'm cared about. Might as well move in with Pokey's folks at this rate. Dad? Will you love me instead? Ness, it's your dad. I deposited $1,170 into your bank account. Holy balls, I am rich. Even though I just checked my bank account, that looks a lot bigger in four digits, so I freak out a little bit. Taking away what you spent, you should now have $859 in the bank. Dad is convenient. He tells you what you have in the bank from any phone, even if you're not near an ATM, and he also tells you how much experience you have until the next level. He also saves your game. If you're playing an older version, this is how you want to do that. As you can tell that I have not talked about it up to this point, I've been relying on restore points quite a bit. We ain't going to bed, though. We kind of just did that. We stayed in the hotel, after all. I don't think it's going to work too hard. Click, beep, beep, beep. And in addition to that, I want to call the Escargot Express. Oh, is that you, Ness? Big bro, it's me, Tracy. What are the child labor laws in this country? Are you certain that you're my younger sister? All right. Well, um, they're gonna send someone over to pick it up, and uh, we're just gonna head out for right now. There are a lot of things to do and see in Tucson. This place has many of its own services, and we ain't seeing them for a little while now, aren't we? Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do this on myself. Okay, get ready for instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready? Say fuzzy pickles. Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. This is, yeah, the cycle shop. I, everyone just loves interrupting me. He walked through the bicycle. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of cool that the game finds a way to walk to you in a way that makes sense, but every now and again it does funny stuff. Delivery charge is $18. Good thing that that guy compensated me. I know what I want to spend my free money on. So you gotta pay the fee, and he can take three items from you. I already showed you the town map, so I don't really see any need to carry that around. It's taking up space. Did I have anything else in particular? You don't want to deposit the soundstone. You don't actually need the soundstone through your journey as long as uh, Tracy has it from the beginning. Some people like filling up on items because of that. I didn't do that, however, so I think now that I have the soundstone in my inventory once I need it. I don't think there's anything else that I want to get rid of. I just kind of wanted to uh, take the town map because it's taking up space. And like I said, inventory space is precious. Cycle shop. I know this bit. It's gonna cost a million dollars, but through my great skills of persuasion, I'm gonna talk the price down to zero. I've played this game before. This is the cycle shop. Puncture. <laughs> Puncture. Bicycles are so much fun and are so convenient. It's a lot faster than walking. You'll be really popular with the biking ground. Ah, oh, well, um, I'm kind of no longer popular with the ladies because I gave up my town map, so I might as well find a new crowd. Do you want a bicycle? Indeed I do. Unfortunately, we don't have any more bikes for sale. We only have rentals. Do you want to rent one? I'll settle for that. I really like your straightforward style. I'll tell you what, I'll let you borrow a bike for free. Ness got a bicycle. You know that two people can't ride on one bicycle, so of course three or four people on a bike would be impossible. Did you also know you can't ride a bike with anything following you? Teddy bears, for example. Carrying a bear and riding is impossible for you. And don't even think about riding a bike into a cave. <laughs> 
Bikes are really convenient, you say? That sounds like a lot of stipulations. Perhaps you've been unhappy with the general speed of things up to this point. Well, I got good news for you. We can now move a lot faster. And we get cool music while doing so. Told you I could talk down the price a little bit. Nessa's got a great big awesome smile on his face and I like writing toward the screen because his cap goes back and forth because they mir just mirrored the sprite and didn't keep his hat the same way like they did in his walking sprite. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it makes him look even happier to just have his hat flipping around in his head repeatedly as he moves. It's a simple pleasure. Now, there's other downsides to the bicycle. You can't talk to people on it. Pressing L to talk to anyone will cause you to get off. If I had some connections, I could waltz right in, but I'm just a regular Joe. I love standing in a queue. I also like words that start with Q. Queen, quiet, quick. I like it too. I wish more words started with Q. It's unfortunately relegated to such unnecessarity. Unnecessarity? Is that a word? Uh, I'm starting a line here. I want to take it for today's show, but I may not get it. We, that's right, we. We are the Runaway Five. We're popular, but not rich. We're being cheated by this theater, and we're in really deep debt. We may be popular, but that girl who lives at the pr house with the preschool is the talk of the town. I want to see her someday. These are based on the Blues Brothers, Jake and Elwood. They were edited outside of Japan from their original black suits, like you see in the sign there, to look a little bit like Mario and Luigi. Why? Because Nintendo's not a big fan of law. Suits. <laughs> Been waiting to say that one. Do you play some sports? If you do, that's fine by us. As if it was not fine by anyone. Well, I guess in nerd communities it would not be fine. We're gonna go around the houses a little bit. I'm seeing the Chaos Theater. Oh, uh, this guy. I've had some people defending the Hintman to me, and I wanted to do that because I've never thought of him in this light before, and it made me think of him a lot better. So the Hintman does have a use even if you have access to the guides. You might not remember what you were in the middle of doing if you last played a few months ago. For that reason... They remind you what you're in the middle of doing in case you haven't played in a while. I like those features a lot because I can't tell you how many times, especially in big RPGs, where I couldn't find my way after not playing for a while. My daughter left for the big city to become a superstar. She's using a stage name, Vane... Oh, Vane something. She's working hard. Don't strain that vein in your forehead, please. Uh, it's just like parents to not remember the stage names of their children. I've kind of had that problem myself, I won't lie. Uh, yeah, let's have a fight. Uh, you didn't team up with the other enemies? What? I thought that's what you did. I guess maybe if the runaway dogs started? Yeah, the cops team up with runaway dogs here. I know that their budgets were low, but relying on strays for canine units, ouch. Yeah, there's enemies going around town, just kind of floating about. You can tell them apart from the regular NPCs because they have blue skin signifying the evil influence that Gygus has over their minds. And this is kind of where the enemies start getting a little bit wackier. A lot more so than just fighting the police, you know. And I'm hoping that we'll get to see all of them, because there's some real great ones in here. I might as well get an insta-win. Oh, maybe I won't get an insta-win. You know, I was going to cut ahead a little bit, though, but I'll give you a chance to listen to this music. I have not talked too much about the battle themes or the music in general, and that is a sin. Tucson would be the greatest place to do it now that we have such a greater variety in themes. This is a remix of Tequila, you know, da 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 that song. This is another thing Earthbound does that I see very few games actually do. No, not ripping off music from other people. It's that they went to the trouble of making separate battle themes. There's no such thing as a regular enemy battle theme. There are like a dozen of them. Um, not only that, but you have different house themes as well to set the different tones and atmospheres depending on who you might be visiting. I've been trying to be quiet at least some of the time during certain battles and when going into certain houses because I want you to listen out for this. It goes a long way, and I think it does a great job of making every character feel unique and more memorable, which is why I think they stick with so many people. There's the Polestar Preschool. We'll stop in there in a little bit because we got some new services in town. We're not going to go shopping at the department store. I passed by it on purpose just because we don't have too many tough fights coming up and we're going to get money from going around town. We might as well save it for a little later. Welcome to Mock Pizza. We don't sell pizza here, we only deliver. Why do you have menus up on the walls? 
Give you our number so you can place an order anytime, sometime. The best pizza is mock pizza. The number is. Pss, 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 pss. You got that? We now have a new phone number that we can dial. You can have pizza delivered to you anytime, anywhere, as long as the Escargo Express guy could deliver it to you. Oh, you! You are one of my favorite enemies. I had a very delayed reaction to you because I didn't look over right away. The New Age Retro Hippie. This guy's name is just fun to say. And he's got the Johnny B. Good remix, so he gets that, those points as well, adding to the goofiness. I like reading out his text. The New Age Retro Hippie lost his temper. The New Age Retro Hippie's offense went up by one. The New Age Retro Hippie lost his temper. The New Age Retro Hippie's offense went up by one. This is getting to be a bit much. The New Age Retro Hippie lost his temper. The New Age Retro Hippie's offense went up by one. The New Age Retro Hippie used a toothbrush and his teeth were white and his breath was fresh. The brightness of the New Age Retro Hippie's teeth made the enemy scared. It did not work on Ness. That would normally petrify you, making it so you can't move or turn. The New Age Retro Hippie used a ruler. Now he can figure out the length of things easily. He's a rare enemy that can use items against you. It's not common that you see that. In fact, he is able to drop toothbrushes on rare occasions. You know, man, I'm just believing in fresh breath. And not because I'm trying to cover up the odor of anything in my breath, man. Level 12. Oh, baby. Offense went up by three. De defense went up by two. Guts went up by one. Vitality up by two. IQ up by one. Sweet. Max HP up by 26. Max PP up by five. And we realize the power of shield alpha. I'd like to show that next time we get into a fight. It's a little bit interesting. But uh, now that we have our first fight with the new Edge Retro Hippie, something that I looked forward to every playthrough done, I'm thinking about catching a bus to three. I heard there are ghosts along the way. I wonder if the bus will have to turn back around and come here, come back. We could try that. We have never ridden a bus, a real bus before. So we'll have a first time for a few things. Yep, this bus goes to three. But I'm not sure if we can get there or not. The fare is $2. Do you want to go? Okay, let's give it a shot. I have a feeling this could get ugly, though. This song is great. Great cruising music. We're screwing that story progress and going through the tunnel to the next town! I don't need no stinking other party members or anything. We made it to the other end of that tunnel. Don't lie to me, reality. You and I both saw that. For some reason, the bus returned to Tucson. Yup, just like I thought. Okay, I'm starting to get the creeps. We're going back to the bus station. Do you want to get off here? Yeah, I think we will. We could always ride it back. The bus is your friendly neighborhood fast travel solution before there were menus for that kind of thing. It makes getting around even more convenient, again, making backtracking a lot more friendly than it might be in a lot of other classic games that are of this sort. Actually, I actually want to talk to this uh, really buff guy over this way. Just a hunch, but I think the ghosts in the tunnel don't like anything upbeat and cheerful. When I was driving in the tunnel, I was playing some grooving tunes and the ghosts started moving slower. I think the ghosts can't stand anything positive. Man, we gotta get that trumpet player over here. I paled in comparison to his positivity, and that's proven by the fact that ghosts weren't driven away by me existing. 2-3 Tunnel to the town of Threed. Part of the reason why I wanted to get the bicycle is because that's a long road, but it's worth your time to explore. Bike will make you get around a lot quicker, and there's another thing about the bike that's kind of fun that feels very lifelike. We'll be hearing about it pretty soon. Cranky Lady. The Cranky Lady is the only time that an enemy is blue-faced in battle and not just on the overworld. I get the feeling that she might be a leftover from earlier in development, because I think some early screenshots show other enemies being like this, and they might have just forgotten to recolor her. Shield Alpha is similar to Buzz Buzz's PSI shield that we saw before, but it protects you against physical attacks, making them do less damage. You cannot have multiple- <laughs> wielded a shopping bag. You cannot have multiple um, shields up at the same time. You can only have one of each type, meaning that there is a slight oversight. If you were to do that battle with Buzz Buzz, or sorry, if you were able to grind up to level 12, then do that fight with Buzz Buzz, Buzz Buzz would go first, cast up his shield, then you'd cast up yours, and the Starman would fry all of you. It's a little bit funny that you can do that. It's another way that you can skip the fight, because losing to it is treated the same way as winning to it, you don't have to do the fight again. I'm defending a little bit here, because I want to show the different attacks that this enemy has, because you don't get a whole lot of chances to fight these humanoid enemies. Not every town's going to have them in it, and 
they're kind of a standout. Wheel of the shopping bag again. Okay, that's her stronger attack. She's got that in a regular attack. Would you do your other move, please? I'm being very courteous by letting you stare at me with that mug all this time. I'm picturing them just both standing there awkwardly while she stares at Ness with that face, neither of them making any progress toward winning the fight. <laughs> Stop. Jeez. I like the wielded shopping bag text as much as the next person, but please. But 32 damage! It's a good thing we learned shield, because I would have been toast if that wasn't the case with how long she's taken to do this. I am out of life ups! Do your other attack! Please! Scout sharply! There you go! It's mildly amusing! It's not even that funny of an attack! I just really wanted to show you that she has got that right there! <sighs> And the award for my new least favorite enemy goes to... All right, my bike. What's really cute is that if you press the R button, you can ring the little bell. And the R button is right where the bell would be on a real pair of handlebars. Isn't that cute? Love those little details. There's a skip sandwich inside, but he's got too much stuff already. Maybe I should have eaten one of these. Uh, Yeah, let's have the cookie. I wouldn't want to have that can of fruit juice out of the garbage can. I said that was too disgusting even for me. And, uh, oh no, evil George Jefferson is gone. I can't fight against him, which is a shame, though, because I actually like him a lot more than the cranky lady. We'll get back on our bike. Can outrun enemies as well. Even better than the skip sandwich, I think. Skip sandwich is thoughtfully played. Oh, no, uh, you get stuck on things a lot with the bicycle. It kind of sucks. Yeah, the bike is weird. I'm sure that if you haven't liked the movement speed, you appreciate it, but it does come with a lot of baggage, and one of those things is you can't fit through a lot of things, and you get stuck on stuff a lot of the time. I made it back to town. I'm nuts about this one kid inventor. No, not that airheaded dwee apple kid. I'm talking about the incredibly hot orange kid. That stupid slob the apple kid always, always asks me for something to eat. He's the inventor. He should invent some food for himself. Savage. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's go in and see these kids. Greetings. I, I'm Orange Kid, the inventor. Have you ever heard of me? I'm a bit embarrassed about my reputation. I have a lot of inventions in development, but I'm running short of cash. I'm basically a happy-go-lucky person, so I'm not worried. You know, I'm working on this machine that would really help you in Peaceful Rest Valley. I'm, I hope it's ready soon. What? You're actually willing to finance the project? I didn't say that. I guess I was just too hopeful. Oh well, never mind. We'll go and see your arch nemesis. I'm not one to compare apples to oranges, but apples are better. Home of Apple Kid, Inventor. Wow, you sure you used some tiny font size on Home of and Inventor. <laughs> I'm gonna go in, and I like oranges too. I'm just a little bit biased because orange flavored things aren't very good. Well, I've sort of neglected doing my housework. I know it's a bit of a pigsty, but anyway, I'm Apple Kid. I haven't taken a bath in a while, so I may be kind of stinky. By the way, I'm starving. Do you have something to eat? If you do, can I have some? What, do you, what can you give me? Buddy, I like you. I got an exit mouse with your name on it. At least you something edible. I'm not a garbage can, you know. Did you hear that exit mouse? He called you garbage. Are you gonna stand for that? You know what I think? I think deep down, you really are a garbage can. Take the can of fruit juice. Thanks, you seem very nice. Uh, I wonder if maybe you would like to invest in some money in my inventions? Yes, 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 oh, uh, excuse me, I, I mean thank you. Uh, by the way, I could really use 200 bucks. I will be right back. Well, go ahead and make yourself comfortable anyway. You can flop down anywhere, even on this pile of tools. I'm racing him! I think I can win! I'm racing him! Ha! No passing zone, what do you think of that? Okay. <laughs> Riding on my bike did make it pretty convenient to go and get that money. I'll give the bicycle that. <laughs> Expecting something from you, I say. Take it, buddy. Just gonna throw it right in your lap. Thank you. I won't let you down. After giving him the money, I want to open up this garbage can. Let's see here, there is a broken machine inside. If we check that, 
broken machine. There's no way of knowing its original use. It's just some kind of broken gadget. That genius Jeff should be able to fix it sometime. I don't know a genius named Jeff. I guess I'll just hang on to this until I do. There is this mouse that is blocking the way. I am a mouse. No one has given me a name yet. You took care of my master. In return, I want to give you this. Please take it and say nothing. Unfortunately, you have too many items. Therefore, I can't give this to you. Oh, I must be in your way. Zip! Wanting to show that text and the fact that he does have to let you leave if you have full inventory. That was why I've been kind of sparing with using my items and why I was using life up so much. But now that we have, I think I'll ditch the cold remedy. Don't have any need for it. The item he gives you is the receiver phone. This allows you to receive phone calls anywhere, but you can't make them. This was an era before common smartphones, after all. Now that we've helped out Apple Kid and we got that item, I'm trying to think about what it is I'd like to do next. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the Escargot Express really quick, and I'm gonna throw the broken machine in there. Eh, we might as well move around a little fast. It's not like I'm wasting HP and I'm getting enjoyment out of moving this fast. Paula isn't here. She suddenly left, and I don't know where she went. Let's rush inside, see if we can get to the bottom of this. When I grow up, I want to be just like Paula. Well, I wanted to play with Paula, but she's gone somewhere. Paula is like a mother to me. You might not be able to comprehend my emotions. I may have a baby face, but I possess the mind of an adult. I beg your pardon. Whistle, whistle everywhere. I, it makes me smile all the while. I'm Paula's mother. I'm busy taking care of these kids. You shouldn't worry about Paula. She has a guardian angel, it seems. You are not behaving anything like I would have expected a mother to behave in a case of a missing child. So, you want to see Paula? Then you come here to see her miraculous powers, but they're just leeches. So are you from a TV station or what? I like saying yes to this. Please leave. My daughter doesn't want to talk to media monkeys like you. Fine, I'm too young for that anyway. Then again, with my little sister having a job at the Escargot Express, who knows? To meet you or not to meet you can only be decided by Paula. Paula has said she would only meet with a boy named Ness. So you're Ness. You're the one who, that was in Paula's dream. You will save the world. Let me go call Paula. She doesn't seem to be here. I wonder where she went. I'm sorry. Could you come back later? Now, where did she go? I'm sorry. Could you come back after a while? He paces in place, meaning that he is worried enough for both parents, so it balances out. I won't have to call negligence on this family. If we go upstairs, Paula only wanted to meet with me, and to me, that says that we're on terms that what's hers is mine. We can get a teddy bear. This is a very good item, and I recommend that you grab at least one of these, because I won't spoil exactly what it does, but trust me, you want one. Unfortunately... That means that our bicycle is now worthless to us and we can't ride it as long as this thing is following us. Yeah, if I've kinda had a bit of an edge to my words about the bicycle, it's that I think it's not in a good place. It, it should not have been at the very beginning because then you would have been used to being able to move around really quickly. I get that. But right as soon as you're at a point where you're like, yeah, I get used to this, this movement speed is awesome, you realize that you can't be on it while you're talking to people, and talking to people is what you do in Earthbound, and you get teddy bears right afterward, including one for free that's in an easy-to-get item box, and you can't have that and ride the bicycle at the same time. It's it's just, it's not in a good spot. I find it to be kind of annoying that they stick it right there. All right, well, we went all around Tucson. We saw just about everything that there was to do around town, and ended off our day on the Polestar Preschool, finding out that Paula is nowhere to be found. It's a pretty safe bet she's going to be important to something. So next time on Earthbound, we're going to go around town, see if we can find anything about Paula's whereabouts. See you guys then.